Hi everyone, today we are going to explain in chapter 4 which is about the nervous system activity 4 from stimulus to response, pathways and nervous center, page 70-71. We will explain the first part and the second part will be discussed later. The objectives of this uh, part includes Majendi's experiment. It is a very important experiment. By Majendi's experiment, you will be able to conclude the role of each of the dorsal root and the ventral root, as well as you will be able to know the role of the spinal nerve and the spinal cord, and you will be able to know the cell bodies of the neurons, where are they located inside the spinal cord as well as in its uh, roots. And finally, we will recall we will make a recalling about the reflex action, the reflex arc, and the pathway that takes place during a reflex action. First of all, this document concerns Majendi's experiment. It's a very important experiment. Very important. I want from you to open your books, yes, and to make beside each experiment like me. This one corresponds to experiment one, E1, sorry, E2, part A, E3, part 4, E4, part 5, uh, part this one, part A, E5, and B, E6, and finally E7. E refers to excitation. What do you mean by excitation? It means a stimulation, where, this, where we apply a stimulus, okay? So, Majendi's experiment was applied on the ox. Majendi wanted to know the role of the ventral root and the dorsal root of the spinal nerve, as well as he wanted to know the specific role of the spinal nerve and the spinal cord. So, he performed an experiment on dogs in order to know the role, and he was able to know the role of each of the ventral root, the dorsal root, the spinal nerve and the spinal cord. It's a very important experiment. So here in this column, we have the experiment. Once Majandi applied the experiment, he was observing the animal's reaction and he was checking the state of the innervated part. What do you mean by state of the innervated part? The part where he applied the stimulus. He was checking its state, whether it is intact. Intact, it means good remains the same or if something was lost or destroyed okay so let's start with the first experiment and the first excitation which was applied on the ventral root of a spinal nerve before let me show you the drawing of drawn. okay you have to draw it on your notebook any question please and uh, ask me Look, I'm going to remind you with the label because it's very important to study the label because by Majendi's experiment, you have to know the, the places of all the excitations. Without knowing the label, you cannot know where the excitation is taking a place, okay? And Majendi's experiment, here it is uh, seen by the pink bold, yes? I've bolded it with a pink color. Where there is a pink color, it is Majendi's experiment. So we have the spinal cord. We have dorsal side or posterior side. We have dorsal groove or posterior groove. Below we have ventral side or anterior side. And here is the ventral groove. These are the dorsal horns. These are the ventral horns. This is the gray matter. And outside we have the white matter. This is all for the spinal cord. Now let's move to the roots. When I tell you dorsal roots, it means the ones on the dorsal side or, or up. This is a dorsal root and on the second side also dorsal root. And below we have the ventral root. And the dorsal root and the ventral root, they end in the spinal nerve. So this is straight one. It is the spinal nerve. Okay, so... How can we distinguish the dorsal root from the ventral root? By the presence of a spinal ganglion on the dorsal root. Now, after identifying the label and knowing all the important parts, 
let me start with Majendi's experiment. Okay, so E1 was applied. You have to write all of these on your notebook and you have to understand each uh, one. E1, excitation one. Okay, here is E1. Look, look with me on the figure. In the ventral root, it is taking place in the ventral root. What was the animal's reaction? Contraction. What does it mean? I'm going to ask you in order to be able to understand. Once contraction took place on the ventral root, sorry, once excitation took place on the ventral root, we noticed that there was contraction. What do I mean by contraction? I mean a movement. So when it is stimulated, a movement took place. And if I ask you, which parts inside our body responsible for our movement? The muscles, right? So what can you uh, get out from, or what can you draw out from such conclusion? Where when we apply a reaction or a stimulus on the ventral root, we notice that there is contraction, which means that the muscles make a movement. What, how can you explain it? So, applying an excitation in the ventral root leads to contraction. This means that the message propagates through the ventral root to the muscle in order to allow excitation, in order to allow contraction. So, can we say that the ventral root is related to the effector organs or to the motor in, uh, organs which are responsible for movement? Yes. Another experiment was done by Majendi in order to confirm this. But at the beginning, we concluded that the ventral root is connected, is innervated to the effector organs or motor organs. Let's move to the second excitation. E2 in the dorsal root. E2, here is it. They told you in the drawing, yes, sorry, I, uh, the figure. If you open your book, follow me, please, on your a document they uh, told you excitation in the dorsal root of the same spinal nerve what does it mean it means on the same side this is a spinal nerve they make an excitation e1 on the ventral root then on the dorsal root of the same spinal nerve it means on the same side not on this side so when you want to put e1 and e2 on the drawing you put it on the same side because they correspond to the same spinal nerve what was the result? Contraction and pain. Contraction and pain. You have to explain each result. Contraction, it means that the message reached the muscle. The message reached the muscle, which ensures contraction. What about pain? Which organs are responsible for pain inside our body? You know that the pain we receive it by the receptors of the sensory organs right we feel pain due to the receptors that are found in the sensory organs so can we relate can we make a relation between the dorsal root and the sensory organs of course yes we can say that once the message is received by our sensory organs it will pass it will be taken by the dorsal root, okay, in order to be taken then to the spinal cord or to the central nervous system, which might be either spinal cord and the brain. And then it will be taken through the ventral root to reach the muscle in order to make contraction. So the direct relation between the sensory organs and the spinal cord is which root? The dorsal root. Majandi performed more experiments in order to confirm these two experiments. So these two experiments make us know that the ventral root is connected to the effector, or, or not connected, takes the message to the motor organs, and the dorsal root receives the message from the sensory organs. Now let's confirm these two explanations. E3, what happened in E3? Let's come to E3. Here was E3. First of all, they told you central end of the ventral. Before they make a dissection, they cut it, the dorsal root. 
Look at th this, please. Once cutting took a place, we obtained two ends, right? Two sides. This side, which is toward the spinal cord, and the other side, which is toward the periphery, the muscle. Okay? Once Majandi find out two sides, he performed two excitations. The side that is toward the spinal cord, that is toward inside, it is called the central end. And the peripheral end, it is toward the outside, the muscles. Okay? Please be careful. Let's see, once an excitation was applied on the central end of the ventral, if I ask you, where is the central end of the ventral root? First of all, the ventral root is below. The central end, it is the side which is toward inside, which is toward the spinal cord. Here is the central end. Look how I've marked the E3. Here is E3. Here is where a stimulus takes the place. What was the result? No reaction. When we applied a stimulus on the central end of the ventral root, no reaction, which means that the dog doesn't react. The message doesn't reach the muscle. And of course, this is very logic because once it is cut, the message, if you notice, cannot move through the ventral root toward the muscle because the nerve here, the root is cut. So it cannot move forward to reach the muscle. And from the result, no reaction, we can conclude one more something that the message also cannot move backward. It cannot return back to go to the ventral root. The message, once a stimulus was applied here, nothing took place because here it is cut and the message cannot move backward to make a reaction. So no reaction took place. So we can conclude that the ventral root, it is the one that is connected to the effector organs, to the muscles. If it is uh, cut, yes, Nothing will take a place because the ventral root cannot take the message to the muscles. And one more conclusion you have to know that the, the message moves only in one direction. It cannot go backward. Okay? Now let's see what happens when a stimulus was applied on the peripheral end. What do you think? Uh, can the muscle take the message? Let's have a look on the figure before reading the result. If we apply the stimulus on the peripheral end of the ventral root, we notice that the, look at the peripheral end, it's still connected to the muscle. So I think that the muscle gonna react. Let's check the result. Excitation E4 at the peripheral end of the ventral root, contraction took place. What do we mean by contraction? We mean by contraction that the muscle received the message and contraction took place. This means that the message moves through the ventral root toward the muscle. So this experiment confirmed for Majandi that the ventral root, it is the one that is responsible for carrying the motor message to the motor organs to achieve movement. So the motor message, its pathway is from the ventral root toward the motor organ and it cannot move backward. Thus, the ventral root, what is its nature? What is its role? Is it motor or sensory? Since it is responsible for carrying the motor message to the muscle, to the effector organs, thus we can say that the ventral root is motor, which is responsible for transmitting the nervous message toward the motor organs, which are, which is the muscle in this case. Okay, so till now, we've concluded that the ventral root is motor, where it is responsible to transmit the nervous messages to the motor organs to achieve movement and contraction. What about the function of the dorsal root? Majandi performed the same experiments along the dorsal root to check the importance of the dorsal root. He said that after concluding that the ventral root uh, receives takes the messages to the motor organs then what is the role of the dorsal root is it the one responsible for receiving the messages from the sensory organs and taking them to the brain or to the spinal cord to be analyzed let's check the role of the dorsal root what happened 
uh, when sectioning of the dorsal root took place. Look here. Here is sectioning. You have to make it like me. You uh, erase it as if it is sectioned and you put two ends. As I said before, the end that is connected to the spinal cord, we call it central end, C. And the end that is at the periphery, we call it P. It is connected to the sensory organs. Okay? Yes. Let's first of all look what was the result. Once Majan dissection the dorsal root, we noticed that there was total loss of sensations. He noticed that the dog doesn't feel anymore. So he was able to make a link between the dorsal root and the sensory organs. He said that the sensory organs, they give the messages to the dorsal root. The sensory organs, they... They send the, the messages by the sensory organs. They are taken by the dorsal root because once the dorsal root was cut, no more sensations. So the sensory messages were not able to pass through the dorsal root in order to feel pain and uh, uh, to ensure the sensations to work. So from the beginning, he was able to conclude that the dorsal root innervates the sensory organs. What do you mean by innervates? It is connected. It receives the messages from the sensory organs. And this was confirmed by E5 and E6. Let's look at E5. E5, it means excitation at the central end of the dorsal root. Have a look at the central end. He applied an excitation here at the central end. What was the result? contraction and pain once he make a stimulus here we notice that there is contraction what do we mean by contraction it means that the message received the motor organ if you have a look at the drawing which i uh, you can understand that the message moved from here entered the spinal cord then through the ventral root it reaches the muscle and the muscle performed contraction so once the central end was stimulated, the muscle reacted by contraction. And there was also pain, which means that the central end, once the central end was stimulated, the message was taken into the spinal cord, analyzed, and ensures the pain sensation. Okay, and then a reaction was performed and reaches the muscle. So what can you conclude from this? Can we conclude that the message moves from the dorsal root toward the spinal cord, the sensory message, the, sensory ma the message that is received by the sensory organs? It moves from the dorsal root toward the spinal cord, and it will be taken through the ventral root to the effector organs to ensure contraction. So we can conclude that the dorsal root is responsible for the sensory information. Thus, it is sensory. Its nature is sensory. Okay? E6, with respect to E6, when an excitation was applied on the peripheral end of the dorsal root, look, it is cut. It's very logic. If you apply a stimulus here, does it have a pathway to move on to enter the spinal cord? Of course, no. So the dog here in this case cannot react. It doesn't react because no, the message cannot move. No reaction took place. So as a conclusion, we can conclude the role of the spinal, uh, sorry, the dorsal root and the ventral root. The dorsal root is sensory, responsible for receiving the sensory messages from the sensory organs and taking it into the central nervous system, which includes the brain and the spinal cord. And then after analyzing the sensory information, a motor message going to be taken through the ventral root toward the motor organs, which include the muscles to achieve a motor um, reaction. Okay, this is for the dorsal root and the ventral root. Still, we have the role of the spinal nerve and the spinal cord. What happened in E7? Section of the spinal nerve or destruction of the spinal cord. I represented it by this line. Look, E7, he sectioned. Majandi finally cut. He cut the spinal nerve. What was the result? The result was no reaction. When he applied a stimulus, no reaction. What do you mean by no reaction? 
Does the dog respond to the stimulus? Of course, no. Does the dog feel pain? Of course, no. What can you conclude from such excitation? Can we conclude that the spinal nerve is responsible for carrying the sensory information into the dorsal root as well as receiving the motor information from the ventral root to be taken to the muscle? Can we say that it performs both reactions? It has a sensory action and motor action? Yes. So from here we concluded that the spinal nerve it is a mixed nerve. It is responsible for uh, carrying sensory information as well as motor information. So the spinal nerve is a mixed nerve. It is both sensory and motor. And with respect to the spinal cord, it is also very logic from the drawing to know its role. As you see that the sensory message, once it is entering from the dorsal root, it is being analyzed in the spinal cord and another message is, is taken through the ventral root to the muscles. So we can conclude the role of the spinal cord. We can see that it is a mean of connection. It is uh, connecting the sensory information with the motor information. So it's a mean of connection between the sensory information and the motor information. So the spinal cord is a mean of connection between the sensory organs and the motor organs. It acts like a mirror. What do I mean by mirror? I mean by mirror that it receives the sensory information from the dorsal root. It analyzes it and it sends a new message to the ventral root to be taken to the effector organs to achieve a movement. So it is performing a reflex action okay to reflect the sensory message to uh, into a motor message to be achieved by the motor organs as a conclusion if i asked you what is the type of the ventral root its type is efferent e why e because it is connected to the effector organs because it takes the messages to the effector organs or to the motor organs. So the type of the ventral root is efferent and its role is motor activity. What do you mean by motor activity? It means that the ventral root responsible for sending the motor message, okay, from the spinal cord into the motor organs. And with respect to the dorsal root, its type is afferent. Afferent, it means sensory because it receives the messages from the receptors of the sensory organs and its role is sensory because it carries the sensory messages from the sensory organs into the spinal cord in order to be analyzed. As a conclusion, the dorsal root, it takes the message from the periphery, which are the sensory organs, to the center, to the spinal cord. Thus, it is of sensory nature or afferent instead of sensory you can tell me afferent and the ventral root it takes the messages from the center from the spinal cord to the periphery to the effector organs thus it is of motor nature efferent and with respect to the spinal nerve it plays an intermediate role where it is responsible for transmitting sensory and motor information thus it is a mixed nerve it has another name mixed nerve this is all for Majandi's experiment. Thank you. Any question, please ask me.